So this is our first look at Android 16 with Material 3 Expressive, thanks to the Android 16 QPR Beta 1. And while I've definitely not been able to dive into everything that this beta gives us, there are a couple of things in this that I think that you might want to know about. First off, if you're not on the QPR 1 beta yet and you want to be, then it's really easy. All you have to do is opt in by selecting your phone that's eligible. So that's basically everything from the Pixel 6 up to the Pixel 9. And luckily, that also includes the A series devices as I have it running on the Pixel 9a. But before you go ahead and jump into downloading this, just remember that this is a beta. So things that you might expect to work might not work. And when you download a beta, there's always that risk of losing all of your data. So just think about it before you actually go ahead and download it. And if you're one of those people that don't want to download it, then let me tell you everything that I think is important in the QPR beta one. First off, there are some nice visual updates thanks to Material 3 Expressive, and you'll either love these or hate them. But you know what? I actually quite like them. We did actually see Material 3 Expressive for the first time last week on the Android show, and it does give Android 16 a little refresh with new physics-based animations, upgraded app components, fresh color themes, background blur effects, and a load more. Now, a lot of what you see is not going to be in that stable release of Android 16 in the next month or so, but it does give us a bit of an idea of what is to come. And one of my new favorite updates actually is starting with the quick panel toggles. Now in quick settings, this has got a really nice change. It looks a lot bolder than it did previously. And there's a nice splash of color that finally gives it just a little bit of personality. The older version of quick settings just felt a little bit bland and didn't have much customization to it. But now you can actually resize these tiles, which is something that I really like. And there's a lot more customization in here. So you can edit this just a little bit more and you can kind of make your quick settings a little bit more unique. That improved tile editor experience is actually really nice to play with. And like I mentioned, this just makes your phone feel a little bit more you. And that's what Material 3 Expressive is all about. You now have one click toggles for internet and Bluetooth, which is really cool. Something you'll notice as well in quick settings. So if you go into here and you swipe down and then swipe down again, you'll notice now that you have a really nice blur and Material 3 Expressive is all about adding a blur somewhere. And this blur just correlates with what your background is. And now it gives you that really nice, almost kind of expressive feel, which I feel like the old version of Android didn't have. So blurs are everywhere here and it's not just in the quick settings that you'll notice these. If you have a look at the old version of the recent screen, then you'll notice that this is just pretty boring and bland and there's not really an exciting backdrop here. But now what you'll see is a blurred version of your wallpaper peeking through, just like you do on the quick settings. And now this one is a little bit more obvious and you can see that wallpaper a little bit more, but I really like this. And there's some other big changes as well to the UI, and that is on the status bar. Now, if you swipe down and have a look, the biggest change that I've seen here is the battery icon. Now, you'll get the percentage inside of that battery indicator for the first time, because previously you would just get it at the side and it would tell you 27% left. But now that is being replaced by exactly how long your battery will last. And I think this is a really nice update. There's also an update to the Wi-Fi symbol as well in the status bar. And this has a bit more of a distinctive three parts to it rather than the older symbol that looked like one symbol and didn't look very exciting. Another Material 3 expressive change is to the volume controls. And it's not massively obvious, but it is just a little less bubbly than it was before. And again, a small change, but something that I kind of like. And with that, the volume control also gets a little redesign as well with those volume sliders looking a little less rounded and bubbly. And it's very similar to the volume control that is on the home screen. And you'll also notice as well, Going into the settings, you'll also notice there's a bit of a change here to how they look, and this looks much nicer. So you'll notice there's some colored symbols now that go down the left-hand side of the screen, and this just gives it a little bit more color, and this also just makes it a little bit easier to know what is what at a quick glance. And this makes the settings app feel really different, and as I have said with everything else, I really like this. 
Some of my favorite changes though are in the wallpaper settings where Google have given us a handful of nice new customization options. The first one is that you can now put your wallpaper into this sort of customizable frame called Magic Portrait. And the way you can do this is by clicking the effects button at the bottom of the wallpaper settings. And then you get the option to pick from five different frames. Now, I don't think this looks amazing right now because what it does is it cuts off the face of my dog. So I can't even see her lovely little face. And I'm gonna give it a pass because it is still a beta but at the moment I don't actually see a place where you can resize the photo just yet. You can also select a few different colors from below the frames, but they seem to be determined by the wallpaper color and you can't just pick your own yet, but it's pretty fun to play around with and something that is a nice addition. The next wallpaper change is something that I really like, and this has already been added by Samsung before, but Google will now let you add weather elements to your wallpaper. You can either pick from your local weather or you can pick from fog, rain, snow, or sun. And you can also change the intensity of this by using that slider at the bottom. And I actually think this looks pretty cool, especially with the rain, because you can see it in 3D, kind of like splashing and hitting off that display. So this is a nice addition from Google. There's also a new slider to resize the clock on that lock screen. And at the moment, this is only available on the default clock, as that's the only one that's using a reactive font, according to Google. But essentially, this allows you to change the size and width all in one movement. And I'm glad that Google has given us a few more options to customize here, and maybe this will come to other clock styles in the future, but for now, it is just on the default clock. So there is a lot in this Android 16 QPR beta one, but we are not finished yet, and there's some smaller changes here as well. When you go into the app drawer, you'll notice this is more of a pop-up page now that doesn't take up the entire screen. And also when you go to close your apps and you swipe up, you'll see a new animation here as well. When you go into the recents menu, you'll notice there's a new pill that's overlaid on the top of each app as well that expands and gives you options like screenshot, select and pause app. You also get this small pop-up when you update your phone that tells you that there's more space for apps and widgets on that home screen. And that's because at a glance has shrunk just a little bit, which is actually a step in the right direction to actually finally being able to move this. And if you go into the fingerprint unlock section of the settings, you'll see a new check and roll button here. And this will open a black screen with a fingerprint unlock symbol on it. And once you've pressed that, what it'll do is then go back to that settings menu and highlight what fingerprint that is that you've got saved or ready to unlock your phone. So that is a lot of what is in this Android 16 QPR beta one. And we haven't even gone over everything yet, but they are some of the bigger changes that you might notice if you download this onto your phone. But there is also something in the QPR beta one, which is not actually available properly, but uh, Michelle has got this working. And it's the fact that you can now get always on display wallpapers on that lock screen. Hopefully we see this in a beta soon and I love this and Google are calling this ambient always on display. And if you wanna read a little bit more about that and see that in action, you can see that Michelle got it working, then you need to go to the Android Authority website and this is the place to be to find out all the latest news coming up with Android 16 QPR beta one and other betas that are coming up. But let me know what you think of QPR beta one in the comments below. Are you gonna risk it and download it? I mean, it does look like a little nice change, but let me know if we're going to download this. Before you head off, why not subscribe to the Android Authority channel? And if you do that, then I'll see you in the next video.